The default shortcuts in DaVinci Resolve suck, and I'm sorry to say, if you're still using the default shortcuts, you're definitely not editing as fast as you could be. Customizing shortcuts is something I did very early on when I first started learning video editing, and it's changed the way I edit. It might not sound like much, but when you're doing the same actions hundreds and thousands of times in edit, the time adds up. Let's get started. If it isn't obvious yet, you're able to customize the shortcuts on your keyboard in DaVinci Resolve so that you can program different keys to do different things. And to do this, you just have to go up to the top left under DaVinci Resolve, click Keyboard Customization, and this is where you can change everything. My goal of customizing the keyboard shortcuts is to put all the hotkeys near my left hand, and this solves two things. First, I can use my left hand for all the shortcuts so that my right hand always stays on the mouse. I also never want to have to lift my hand off the keyboard to do different things. For example, the delete key is the backspace key on the keyboard, but that actually doesn't make sense to me because all of your hotkeys will be on the left side of the keyboard, and if I have to lift my hand up, look down at the keyboard, and press the delete key on the other side of the keyboard, that just wastes a lot of time. And again, it might not sound like much, but when you're doing the same things hundreds and thousands of times in edit, the time will definitely add up. Also keep in mind that all these shortcuts I talk about, it's going to be for Mac. You can definitely still do this on Windows, but the actual key that I'm going to refer to is going to be for Mac. So whenever I say Command, if you're on Windows, you're going to press Control. And whenever I say Option on Windows, you're going to press Alt. On the top right of the Keyboard Customization section, you'll probably be on the DaVinci Resolve preset. If you came from another video editing program like Premiere or Final Cut, you can always choose those programs here so that the default keys match closer to those editing programs, but I would still recommend changing out a bunch of these. If you click the three dots on the top right, you can actually save your keyboard shortcuts as a preset or import or export them. A little bonus for you, all the keyboard shortcuts I'm going to talk about here, I'm going to have them linked down in the description below for you so that you can download them for free and import them here. So the first three shortcuts I'm going to show you is Q, W, and E, and this is how I like to explain it to people. So by default, if you're trying to split a clip, you would have to move your mouse over to the blade edit mode and click on it. But even after that, you have to left click on the clip itself just to cut it in half. Now what happens if I want to delete everything to the right of my playhead? I would have to split the clip in half, select the clip, delete it, and then move all other clips after it so that it attaches to where my playhead is. What is that, like five clicks? With QWE, this is a game changer. So imagine how QWE is laid out on your keyboard. W is in the middle, and that's gonna go directly on your playhead. Q is to the left of W, and E is to the right of W. So to split a clip in half, you're gonna press W. And that's gonna affect everything on the playhead, which is just splitting the clip. If you have a specific clip selected, when you press W, it will only split that clip in half. However, if you don't have any clip selected, it's gonna split every single clip on your track right where the playhead is. Now Q is to the left of W, and since it's to the left of W, it's gonna delete everything on the left side of your playhead. So instead of having to split the clip, selecting everything to the left of the playhead, deleting it, and then shifting everything back over, you can just press Q and it'll do all of that in one single click. And the same thing goes for E. So since E is on the right of W, it's gonna delete everything on the right side of the playhead. What if you just want to delete the whole clip and then shift everything over? So again, instead of just deleting it and then having to drag everything over, I have mine programmed to S. So that's going to take the whole clip, delete it, and ripple everything so that the rest of the clips attach to the clips before it. These four are probably the biggest time savers, because even if you're editing something like a reel where you might only do like 10 cuts, by default, it would take you like 50 different clicks just to complete those 10 cuts. But with these, all I have to do is press 10 buttons and everything is cut. If you have a lot of clips all over your place in your timeline, instead of dragging every single clip individually to line them all up again, instead make sure you're not selecting any clips and then press Command D. And this would delete all of the gaps in between the clips. To zoom in or out of my timeline, instead of having to drag the slider, I have Command 1 programmed to zoom out and Command 2 programmed to zoom in. Now sometimes there are instances where you want to select everything to the left or the right of the playhead. And by default, you would have to zoom out of your timeline use your mouse and drag and select everything, and then shift everything over. With this, I'm gonna use the Q and E again. So remember, Q is on the left side of W, so it's gonna select everything to the left. So I have mine programmed to shift Q, and that will select everything to the left of the playhead. To select everything to the right of the playhead, I have shift E. Hopefully this makes sense with how Q, W, and E is laid out, and how Q affects everything to the left of the playhead, and E selects everything to the right of the playhead. If that was a little bit too fast for you, just go back again, rewatch it in half speed, 
and you'll get it. Now I've kind of laid out one, two, and three the same way. So two is in the middle, which is where the playhead is, one is to the left of the playhead, and three is to the right of the playhead. So to play and pause, I would just press two. So press it once to play, press it again to pause. Since one is to the left of two, when I press one, it will start playing your clip backwards. If I press one again, it will play in reverse even faster. And if I keep pressing it, it'll keep playing even faster and faster. Now three is to the right of two, so I'm gonna press it once to go forward. And if I keep pressing it, it will speed up the clip. Now keep in mind, this is not speeding up the clip itself. It's just speeding up your playback of it. This is really useful because sometimes I'm just watching some clips again and I already know that that part is going to be good. So I can just keep pressing three just to speed it up, just to get to different sections faster. Now there's gonna be a bunch of times where you want to enable or disable a clip. Maybe you only need the video portion of a clip and you just wanna disable the audio. Or maybe you have some overlays on top of each other and you wanna disable one just to see what's below it. So by selecting a clip and pressing D, you can disable the clip. And if you press D again, you can enable it. As you can see right now, when I select my clip, the audio for that clip is also selected. And when I disable it, it's disabling both together. But what if I only want to disable the audio? So I have G map to link selection, and when I press it, it will allow me to select just the audio without selecting the video. And this way I can disable just the audio and leave the video untouched. I can even also select the audio and then delete it. Now, like I mentioned in the beginning, the default key to delete the selection is backspace, and I hate that. So instead I have it mapped to V. So I can still use my left hand to delete the clip without having to take my hand off the keyboard. What if I delete the audio for that clip, but then I realized later that I actually need it. And that becomes a huge pain because you would have to go back to your media pool, you would have to find the clip, find the audio for it, and then somehow sync the audio and the video back together. So instead I have F mapped to match frame. So with this video selected, when I press F, it's gonna give me that exact portion of the clip in the main display. So now I can drag the video down for it, the audio for it, or drag both the audio and video back down onto my timeline. Now when I'm shooting things like reels or even YouTube videos, I often have my video camera recording and then I have a separate audio source running to a recorder. So right now I have the MKE 600 and that's running to a separate recorder and then later in post I have to sync the video clips and my audio source together. And this is how I like to do that. So I drag my video file in which will also still have audio because I always have audio running on my cameras and I drag the good audio from the MKE 600 down into a separate track. I highlight both of these clips and I press Shift Y. And this is mapped to automatically align clips. So I press synchronize using waveform since I'm mostly not using timecode. And I just press sync. And this will analyze the audio from my video camera and analyze the audio from my recorder and then sync them together. Now once they're aligned, I select my audio clip and I press option up, which will shift the audio clip upwards and overwrite the scratch audio on my video clip since I don't need that anymore. So option arrow will shift whatever clip is selected and you can press option up to shift it up and option down to shift it down. Once these are matched together, I'm going to highlight both the audio and the video and press C. And I have C mapped to link clips. And that's actually how I edit a lot of my reels. Now this is a real-time edit of one of my reels. Granted, this is a shorter reel, so it's not as complicated, but you can see that with all of these hotkeys, how fast I can sync the clips together, link them together, scrub through everything, cut out all the good and bad parts, and I'll at least finish the base of an edit. Now there's a final few commands I do use pretty often. So if I want to do things like change the clip speed, all I have to do is select the clip and press R. And that will bring you to the change clip speed menu. Now if I want to do any speed ramping, all I have to do is press command R. And this will bring up the speed change menu. Here you can do things like add different speed points. So let's say I want to add two different speed points and then change the speed of the middle section. Oftentimes when you're doing speed ramps, you want to smooth out the transition just so it's not so abrupt. So I have that mapped to Command Shift R, which is going to bring up the read time speed menu. This is where you can get that graph to click on the points and then smooth them out. Now here's a couple of shortcuts that I only started using not too long ago, but they've actually come in really handy. So first is going to trim mode, and for me, I have that programmed to T. So by default, when you select on a clip and you drag it, it's just going to move the actual clip around. In trim mode, if you press T and then you drag on the clip, you can actually shift what the clip is playing without shifting the actual placement of the clip. This is super useful when I'm trying to fine tune the section of B-roll that I'm using, and even better when you press T and you drag it, your display then shows you what the first frame of that clip looks like and what the last frame of that clip looks like. And this way you're able to fine tune the exact portion of the B-roll that you're using without actually affecting the duration of the clip itself. Keep in mind that this only works if your clip is not at its full length, because if you're trying to shift it when the clip is at its full length, there's actually nothing to shift because it's already playing back everything. 
In the normal mode, when you hover your mouse over the side of the clip and you drag it, you can actually shorten the clip itself. In trim mode, when you try to do the same thing and you drag it, it will instead ripple it so that all your clips still stay stuck together. Now sometimes you need to align your video to maybe something like a beat drop, and you're pretty close and you only need to shift the clip one or two more frames, but when you try to drag it, it actually snaps over way too much. So I have Z and X programmed to one frame. So if you hover your clip and you press Z, it will shift the clip over one frame to the left. And if you press X, it will shift the clip one frame over to the right. This is just super useful for those tiny little adjustments that you need to do to fine tune your clip. Now in and out points are super useful. Maybe you just want to select a specific section of your timeline to render out, or even in the media pool, you only want to select a certain section of the clip so that you can drag that onto your timeline. For me, I have number four selected as the in point and then number five selected as the out point. And this just lets you mark out a specific section of your clip. Now to get rid of those in and out points, I just have it mapped to option X. And honestly, for video editing, that's pretty much all of the shortcuts that I use. Again, like I mentioned, if you are interested in checking out these shortcuts, I will have a link down in the description below for you to download for free. So that if you want to use these, you can definitely just input it right into your DaVinci Resolve and then start using that. Obviously, if you don't like how some things are laid out, you're definitely welcome to change it. But I do recommend giving at least some of these a try and hopefully it'll help you speed up your video editing process. If you like this video, definitely consider leaving a like, subscribe if you want to see more photo and video content, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.